Hello everyone, Colin Cadet here for Woodwork Web. For many months I've had questions and emails from many of you saying, can I do a video on making knives? How do we make knives? And I, I don't make knives, I don't know how to make knives, but I found somebody who does. He's a, an expert knife maker and today we're going to go and visit Peter. He makes survival knives and kitchen knives, hunting knives, all sorts of different knives. So today we're going to go and visit him and watch the process as he takes us through what it takes to make a knife. Hi Peter. Oh, hi Colleen. Thanks for uh, inviting me into your knife making shop here. And it looks like you're busy doing something already. Yeah, I'm just starting to mark the grinding lines on that blade that is already cut out. So you buy the raw steel and cut these blade shapes out yourself? Yes, that's exactly what it is. My knives are designed from scratch on. They are my own design and I build them from scratch on. And what we see here is a partially cut up sheath from the design already, what I made earlier. And I'm actually just here in marking the grinding line on that one blank so that I have a guidance when I'm going on the grinder. And that is cut out on the water jet and you see isn't that amazing? That is one of the blanks and we have two other ones out here. So that's how that is done in a little bit more professional. Peter, this is completely fascinating. Now here's the, the blank that you were just working on, but this is the progression of other ones that you're... I know you work on a few at the same time. Now what's the next thing from this? What happens next? After the blank has been cut out, Basically what has to be done, it has to be marked for the grinding lines and also the center line here. Oh! And uh, then you do the grinding and shaping of the blade itself. So this one here is already after heat treating, but you see how the blade itself is shaped. Yep. When the grinding and shaping is done, that's when it goes into the heat treatment. That is basically when a knife gets born as a usable tool. Oh, so you even heat treat these. I guess you have a little kiln that we're going to look at in a little bit that you heat treat these. I wondered why the, these are different. Maybe hard to see, but you can see that these are, are different colors here. And uh, that's because these are already heat treated and this is blank. Is this is pretty shiny. This looks like, is it stainless steel? This is stainless steel, it's a high-end uh, powder metallurgically made stainless steel, so the uh, state-of-the-art knife steel, what you want to use as a special knife yep. maker or custom maker. So this is the kiln, so after the knife, after the blade is cut and shaped, then it goes in here for tampering and you hang it on this hanger thing here. Ooh, wow, look at the feel of heat. So just like that, and it, it hangs in there for how long then? Usually it hangs in there for 20 minutes okay. until it reached austenization temperature and then it gets quenched in oil. Okay, perfect. Wow, that's uh, quite a process. So the next process after it comes out of the kiln, um, these, you know, you've pre-drilled some of these holes in here, but I notice you've got some blanks. I guess it's to give it some, some depth. Yeah. The um, holes have to be pre drilled before the heat treating, if not you cannot do that. What we are doing now here is, I have already pre-installed the um, top pommel, which gives the eagle set on the eagle skinner. Yep. And we will go and drill these holes. After they have been drilled, we put the other piece on it, and you see these holes are already pre-drilled. Okay. So the process what we are doing. So we have the one part of the eagle head installed with the pins. Yep. They come through on the other side and now the matching piece has okay. to be put there. Okay. And what we are going to do then is, you see the pins are not sliding very easy through. Yep. I can push some with the finger through, but we hammer them through and then we rivet basically on an anvil the pins flat. And that locks those rivets in there then? That locks the rivets in place, that locks the um, metal pieces in place so that we have a secure tight fit. Just want to show everybody. Now why is this, you've got, are these stainless steel, these yep. rivets? And this is brass, why is that brass? Why have you got brass in there? 
These stainless steel rivets are the same than the base material for yeah. 16 yes. and the brass one is especially in the location where the eagle finally should have the eye. Oh. <laughs> so the eagle skinner has an eagle head basically if you would pass a toy. Yep. And you see that one here, oh, the see. eagle has yellow eyes I so see. we put a brass pin in it oh. to make it yellow. Oh for goodness sakes. <laughs> well you gotta be fancy. Yep. Hang on now. So now the rivets are in, they have to come out on both sides a little bit and now they are getting hammered down. So this is all soft material and now the pins they expand on the top and these pieces are secured in place. So for, for us woodworkers the most exciting thing of making a knife is putting the handle on and obviously you're using wood but I know you've got antler and things like that. Now is it is the is the wood riveted on just like this? The wood is riveted on but I cannot hammer the rivets down because they would split the wood. Oh. The wood is not as solid as the steel wood we have up here which is actually a stainless steel. Yep. To get the wood on we start with fitting it. Basically you see there's a couple of uh, pre-cut scales, they don't fit on this handle at all. Yep. You start in the process <clears throat> of having the one angle correct, right? Yep. So you hold it in place and then you go to your drill and basically from this side, through the existing holes, you drill the holes. Okay. So as we have done on that one. The next step is, because we have a bolster down here, you go and have this wood slab, handle slab, in place, the holes drilled, and then you start on working the um, bolster basically, which has also three holes in it. Yeah. You have to go step by step, one, two, three, and the easiest way is to have the wood shaped instead of the bolster. Okay. So after this, this is called a bolster. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So after that is done, you basically put the bolster on and you drill the holes through that one. To okay, I'm just going to turn that to, to the camera a little bit more so that the folks can see that. So we've put this together just so that you get an idea of what this is and then of course the next thing is riveting these. Um, but we still have a pretty raw knife right now except that the blade has been heat treated. And I guess the next thing after we rivet this is to go and start, somehow you start shaping this. Is that right, Peter? That is correct. After all the handle pieces are installed, we do the contour, contour shaping and then we make everything round and nice and smooth. Okay. So what Peter's going to show us now on his um, special belt sander is how he forms the handles. So that looks like that's the basic shape, is that? Is that right, Peter? That is correct. We have the handle now rounded. 
There is some polishing and some smooth finishing work still outstanding. But what we want is actually a nice fit in the hand. Yeah. You see how the thumb sits here? It does. So yeah. For the finger groove. Your, so the safety is there, it feels the way it's supposed to. You're a real artist uh, when I watch you uh, carving that. Okay, so you're going to show us how to sharpen a knife now, Peter. Yes, and that is the paper wheel system what I'm using. You see that knife here after making, it's yeah. totally dull. Yeah. Now let's put a razor edge on it. It should be okay. Thanks, Peter, for um, showing us all about your knife building um, and uh, all of the techniques and that. Um, it was uh, really good to see that, so good. Thank you very much, right. Colin. It was a pleasure to have yeah, you on. Yeah, good. All the best. Same to you. Okay. See bye you. Now.